When we first learn about ILS approaches, we look at the localizer guiding us laterally on the extended runway centerline and make some general observations about it. Here's a typical ILS at Sioux City. The localizer antenna is situated at the departure end of the runway and configured so that a full course deflection from left to right is 700 feet at the runway threshold, 350 feet to either side of the centerline. There's a very small amount of error tolerance for this normal ILS configuration. The final approach course from the localizer on these approaches will be aligned with the runway centerline to a very precise level of accuracy, within only 0 0.03 degrees, or 5 feet to either side of the centerline at the threshold. Some airports, however, have unique operational requirements that cause the localizer antenna itself to need to be moved off the extended runway centerline. This is the ILS to runway 31 at Barrow County, Georgia. It's an ILS with both vertical and lateral guidance, and it is a precision approach. Notice the low decision height of 250 feet, but also notice that the localizer is offset from the runway center line by 2.77 degrees. So the localizer is not at the departure end of the runway lined up with the center line. Looking at the airport diagram, we could see its symbol locating it off to the right a bit about three-fourths of the way down the runway. What this means is that the approach course can't align with the runway center line, but there are still some configurations that are required that'll allow this to qualify as a precision ILS approach. The FAA standard for terminal instrument procedures, or TERPS, calls out offset localizers in chapter 10, saying that on an ILS or a localizer approach, the offset from the runway center line must not exceed three degrees. Here we're at 2.77 degrees, so we satisfy that on this approach. Additionally, since the offset localizer won't align with the extended runway center line, it needs to intersect it at an appropriate point. It has to intersect the center line at the very least 1,100 feet inside of the point on the approach where the decision height is reached. The decision height on this approach is 250 feet above the threshold. The glide slope is a standard 3 degree slant and begins at the threshold crossing height 43 feet above the ground. This means that when following the glide slope, we arrive at the decision height 3,950 feet from the threshold. Where's the math behind this? It's trigonometry that we've demonstrated in a few other videos, but not important for understanding this concept. Anyways, 3,950 feet from the runway is this point right here. The TERP says that in order to qualify for a true localizer, the course has to intercept the center line no closer than 1,100 feet from this point. If we draw an arc 1100 feet from the decision height point, we see that we do satisfy this, as the interception point lies beyond 1100 feet. The TERPS wants to make sure that we're able to gain visual sight of the runway well prior to crossing the extended runway center line to give us time to align ourselves for landing. What about the width of the localizer guidance at the threshold? A normal localizer provides 700 feet from full left to full right deflection at the runway threshold. An offset localizer is a bit different. It takes a point along the approach course the same distance away from that intersection point with the runway center line. From this point, which the Terps calls the fictitious threshold point, the course width is 350 feet to either side. This means that we could be pretty much fully deflected on this side of the localizer and the runway would still be off to our left a bit. Again though, we should be gaining sight of the runway well in advance of getting here. Still, the effect is to give a safe ILS approach even with a bit of an offset. Here we are on final approach. The cloud deck is very low. Our decision altitude is 1,172 MSL. About 100 feet above that, we break out and gain sight of the runway. We're still left of the extended center line. We'll come down to decision altitude and at that point switch off from autopilot, still left of center line. This allows us to visualize our intercept at the center line and make it gradually as we hand fly the remainder of the approach in visual conditions. A challenging but still doable precision approach to minimums. These parameters we mentioned for the localizer are true whether we're flying a precision ILS approach like we are here at Barrow County or a non-precision localizer only approach like the one into runway 28 left in Hayward, California. This one is offset 3 degrees, the max allowable. But this isn't why it's a non-precision approach. It's a non-precision because it lacks the vertical guidance of a glide slope the way an ILS does. What happens when the localizer course is more than 3 degrees off the runway center line? It no longer qualifies as a localizer. It is what's called a localizer type directional aid, or LDA. 
This one at the Dalles is offset almost 15 degrees, which is the maximum allowable for even an LDA. The Terps has other requirements for runway centerline intersection. Even still, any LDA approach, either without vertical guidance or like this one, a rare case which does incorporate vertical guidance from a glide slope, is a non-precision approach. The minimum altitude should be treated as a minimum descent altitude, not a decision height.